Good day. In this video, we're going to talk about the, lesson, the lessons that we have learned from Coulomb's Law, FET simulation. So, Coulomb's Law is a law in physics that describes the electrostatic force between the two charged objects. Now, I want to emphasize the word electrostatic force. So, electrostatic means that charges are kept stationary while force is measured. In other words, you have two objects that have charge and you're trying to measure their force of attraction or force of repulsion, but you don't want them to move as a result of the force. So you try to keep them stationary to calculate the electrostatic force. And in the FET simulation, that's properly illustrated by the two persons that are either pulling the charges away or pushing them back in depending on whether they are attracting or repulsing. So let's look at this first picture. So you can see that two persons are pulling the charges away because the arrows definitely show that they are attracting. So in this way we are keeping the charges stationary and then we can calculate the electrostatic force. Here in this picture, Q1 and Q2 are both positive or negative, I forgot. But anyway, they are repelling. So these two persons had to push back to keep the charges stationary. So what did we learn from Coulomb's Law of Fed Simulation? Number one, that like charges repel, opposite charges attract. But of course, you already know that. But it was emphasized here that when the two charges are black and red, meaning positive and negative, that they have opposite charges and so they attract. And now here, when the two charges are blue and blue or positive and positive, they have like charges, so they repel. We also learned that the electric force is directly proportional to the product of the magnitude of the charges. So in this picture, you see that the first charge is a value of negative 10 microcoulombs, which means that here micro means times 10 to the negative 6. You learned this back in grade 7. Some of you are my students. And the other charge also has a value of 10 microcoulombs. So the product according to what we learn here. The product of the magnitude of the charges are 10 times 10, 100 microcoulombs. I think I have a pointer here. So here the product is 100. Just keep that in mind. Here, in this other example, look, the product is 40. I hope you see that. So which situation has the bigger product of course the first picture and as you can see the force between the both charges is also much bigger here compared to here only 679 so therefore the bigger the product the bigger the force between both objects Here's one thing I would like to emphasize before I proceed to the next lesson. Some of you were confused. Q2 has a smaller charge than Q1. Q2 is negative 4. Q1 is negative 10. The magnitude is smaller, negative 4. The magnitude of 4 is smaller than 10. Why, do, why does it still have the same force as Q1? 679 and 679. Well, that's according to Newton's third law. Doesn't matter that the Q2 has a smaller charge than Q1. When they interact, they interact in such a way that they have the same force. For every action, there's an equal but opposite reaction. But even if they feel the same force, doesn't mean the effects are the same. Q2 will be more affected by this force than Q1. 
So even if the force is the same, the effects are different. And I think that's where your confusion lies. You're assuming that maybe Q2 will have a greater force because you feel that its effects will be greater. But they have the same force, just that the effects are different. And in the future, I will try to emphasize further what I mean by effects. We also learned that the electric force is inversely proportional to the square of the separation distance between the charges. You, alre you already have an idea that when the charges are farther apart, the force is smaller. When the charges are closer together, the force is bigger. But I made you plot the graph to actually determine the exact relationship into the exact model that we found out is the, that actually it's an inverse square effect. It's not a linear effect. It's actually an inverse square, which really it means that the further apart two charges are, the effect is much, much greater. It's the force reduces tremendously. The, the, and um, the closer the two objects are, the force increases tremendously as well. It's a square, not a linear thing. It's a square thing. So I, I really enjoy this part of the activity because it really showed you what the actual effect is. Otherwise, you would have just um, assumed that the effect is linear. And finally, um, I think this is the last lesson that we've learned. If at least one object doesn't have a charge, there would be no electrostatic force. So in order for an electrostatic force to occur, both objects must be charged. Here, the first picture, Q2 is electrically neutral. The value is zero. And here, uh, ch charge one has a little bit of charge, but as you can see, it's white, almost white. So basically, they are both electrically neutral. I actually I wanted this slider to move to the zero mark. I just failed to do so. But if we pretend that this is actually zero, yeah, we won't expect any electrostatic force. We might expect other forces, but never electrostatic force. Because for electrostatic force to occur, both objects must be charged either similarly charged or oppositely charged. That's it. Because of those lessons, we now have a formal definition for Coulomb's law. The electrical force between two charged objects is directly proportional to the product of the quantity of charge of the objects and inversely proportional to the square of the separation distance between the two objects. It's a long definition, but can summarize it in this one formula. F is equal to KQ1, Q2 over R squared, where F is the electrical force, K is the Coulomb's constant, 8.99 times 10 to the 9 Newton meter squared per Coulomb squared. Don't worry about the units. The units are just there to cancel things out and leave out Newtons because the unit of force is always Newtons. Doesn't matter what kind of force that is, electrical force, gravitational force, the unit of force is always Newtons. Q1 is the quantity of charge of one of the objects, Q2 is the quantity of charge of the other object, and R is the distance between the two objects measured from their centers. Now you're ready to solve problems involving this formula. Thank you.